Hickok 45, and I'll bet you can tell by looking at me, it's going to be a good day. That looks like a cowboy holster and some sort of cowboy gun, as some people refer to them, right? Well, you're correct. It is going to be a good day because I'm about to shoot. And this is a single action. You birdie. Cow and it happens to be a 22, as you probably could tell from the, from the title. And it also is a very special 22 because it holds 12 rounds. How's that? So you essentially don't have one six shooter. You have two six shooters, uh, more or less. Let's take a couple of shots with it. All right, 22. <laughs> and you know, when you have a 22, it just begs to shoot at 10 cans, doesn't it? Yeah, there's another one back there. Oop, put a hole in it. There's a couple with something in them. <laughs> oh, I got the pot wet. Probably won't smoke. Eh, there's a little bit of smoke there. Oh, there's one in front of the stop sign. Let me hit him. Yeah. I wonder if I could knock him off with some shrapnel. Nah, I was trying to hit just below it. I wonder if I could hit that two liter with my off hand. All right. What a cowboy. <laughs> oh, well, that wasn't very dramatic. I'll get him on the move. Well, I guess I won't. It's empty. Let's make sure it's empty. That should have been 11 shots. Yeah, that was 11. It does hold 12. However, I'm going to load 11 and uh, give you, again, a little lesson in how to make it safe. Just like with a six shooter, generally you load five. At the range, you could load six if you're about to shoot, or you could load 12. But I like to uh, demonstrate you know, how to do that. Uh, you know safely because you might want to like I was I had it in my holster and so if it's loaded and I've got it in the holster and that's why they'll uh, you know the Cowboys would load five because they'd have it in their holster and there are different ways they fell off their horse if something hit the hammer if you haven't seen that video what's it called John should you load five or should you load six or something like that we demonstrate very clearly how if you hit the hammer uh, and there's a, a round under it, it will go off. And that has happened. A lot of cowboys have holes or had holes in their foot, okay, or leg because of that. I also read that uh, someone who seemed to know what they were talking about said when they would they throw your, and I haven't had horses, but sling their saddle up on, on the horse or something, the stirrup sometimes would fall down and hit that. Well, if that's true or not, but it would go off. And so anyway, you load five. And I'll show you load seven on this one. Okay, I'm gonna get him back out of there. Oh, I love, you know, I love old uh, single actions of any kind. And uh, we're gonna look at it here a little more closely. This is this is pretty cool. Again, we appreciate Bud sending this to us. It'll be on an e-gunner. And uh, again, we uh, especially want to thank the NRA for their support. And I hope you'll go to the description and uh and join at our link and get a discount okay it's at the nra.org slash hickok 45 and there's a link in the description so be sure you check that out and get involved in gun rights if you're not okay uh the uberti cattlemen they make these in various calibers of course and um, this one's a little different because it's a 22 and if you ever thought about now this is a 45 we got out here colt uh just a little bit of comparison you know, you have a different ratchet system because you have just six holes. And so the, the, the mechanism just has to advance it, you know, six different spaces. Well, it's a bit of a challenge, really. I've done a little bit of reading on this. And one reason you don't see many single actions or have not in the past that, you know, chamber this many rounds is it's just a different affair to have a full hammer pull all you know all the way back like that and the cylinder not really turn that much just to the next uh little ec 22 i mean you got 12 of them in there so you know me if you've been around a while i love high capacity 22 rimfire revolvers whether it's a smith and wesson or it's an old single action okay or a, a revelation or a ruger whatever it is so you got lots of holes there and you know a lot to fill okay Pretty cool. Now this comes in uh, 
and uh, just like the Colts, uh, four and three quarter inch barrel, five and a half, and seven and a half. Seven and a half would be a big old heavy gun for 22. I really personally wouldn't want it any bigger than this one. But then again, if you like that old cavalry model with the long barrel, uh, might make it easier to shoot well, don't know. But uh, it's, it's pretty cool in any barrel length, if I, as I have stated before. And let me show you, I read an article though, and it, and it, and it, it kind of got me off course because I think it was by a noted gun writer, tell you the truth, that I always trust that somehow, I don't know if it was a misprint or what it was, but it said the load, if you want to leave a chamber empty and say you're going to carry this around for a while and you want to make sure it's safe, you, uh, in order to have a hammer down on an empty chamber, just like with this, and I've showed this many, many times, you know, you load one, skip a chamber, and then load the next four, and then when you get that last one loaded, you pull the hammer back, let it down, and it'll be on an empty chamber. You know, that's just how you operate those, okay? Uh, well, because these are so close, it's just a little different. It, it doesn't work out that way. And it said in this article, you load two, skip one, and load nine. And you get a lot, you know, when you get back to, you know, where you are and, you know, you let the hammer down, it'll be on an empty chamber. I said, okay, that's cool. I did that. And... I did it several times and it just didn't work out. And the problem with this one is, you can, unlike a big old 45, you can't really see where the rounds are. The, the chambers are kind of recessed a little bit anyway and you can't really eyeball it and it's hard to tell if there is a round under there and all that. End up looking through the firing pin hole there. But uh, I, I did it several times, I couldn't get it to work. And uh, I finally said, well, you know what, maybe, I'm just gonna try three and that's what I'm gonna do right now. And we'll see if it works. Load three. One, two, three. And you don't have to count them after that. Just, you got three in there, skip one, and then uh, just fill up the rest of the holes. And you're going to 11, so it'd be eight more, right? So it, if you're gonna load 11, because you might wanna carry it and have it on an empty chamber, okay? So you just keep putting them in. You don't have to count eight, uh, because uh, you'll know when it's time to quit because the chamber will turn up and it'll have around it, but you don't advance it. Close that up, cock it back, bang, it's on an empty chamber. All right? Uh, and then again, when you have one of these firearms, and these are Colt clones pretty much, it's not like a, the Rugers or a different action. This doesn't have the transfer bar and that sort of thing, so it is kind of like that, made like this one. You know, again, whenever you cock a, a, an original Colt or a Colt clone, which is what that is, when you bring it to half cock for any reason, you're loading, you're unloading, you don't go back down from there. It, it, it messes with the bolt, and that's how you get all these lines on the cylinder and you can mess up the action. You always go all the way back and then down, no matter what you're doing with it, okay? So, and, and that was really what I found with this. If, if you, with this gun, you could load two, skip one, then load nine, and you'd end up right here and when you finished, there would be an empty, an empty chamber under the, uh, the hammer if you let the hammer back down from right there, which you're not really supposed to do, okay? But when you bring it back, see, it advances it one more. So, for what that's worth, okay? So, I'm on an empty chamber, so, see, I could carry that. I could fall down, you know me, awkward, stumble around. I could fall and hit that hammer. A walnut could fall out of that tree and come mm, falling around that hammer. It's not going to go off. Whereas it would, probably, if there was a round under it. Okay? So that's why you do that. It gives you more flexibility. Now, obviously, we're just shooting at the range. I could load 12 and shoot 12, just like I could load 6 and, and uh, you know, shoot 6. But, uh, I don't know. I just like to demonstrate how, how to do it. Oh, let's shoot the target. We're shooting federal ammo, of course, and we appreciate that. Some CCI and some other federal. Three on that. Okay. I think the sights are pretty much on. That doesn't mean I can hit what I'm aiming at, but the sights are pretty much on. Let's try a two liter. Up, oh, shot left. <laughs> uh, 22, really. <laughs> like that it really puts on a show sometimes uh fortunately you have to hit it though whoa <laughs> i need washing anyway oh boy 
Let's see. Oh, here's a tin can over here. Let's shoot a tin can. Boom. Went right through it. Right through that one. Now I bet it won't go through this one. <laughs> Should be about empty. Let's see if it is. Mr. Cowboy, we will spare your life if it goes click. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. You had to go. It was not your day. Yeah, I thought it might be empty. I don't count my shots. I'm on the range. Nobody's shooting back at me. I know that's not tactically correct, but I've survived so far on my own range. Okay. All right. So it loads and unloads, uh, you know, just like a regular, uh, you know, uh, single action. It's just... Uh, the reason I'm kind of making a big deal out of this, this is a little uh, unusual to have a single action 22 that holds you know, 12 rounds. That, that, those, uh, that's a relatively new uh, thing in the world, okay? So it's kind of, and that's why I, ordered, I saw it on, uh, I saw it somewhere, and then I went to, uh, to Buzz to see if they had those, and uh, they did, and I said, send me one, please. And uh, I thought you might enjoy seeing that, because there's a little cowboy in all of us, and you might not want to shoot a big 45 or even a 38 special all the time. Maybe where you live, you could be in another country, wherever you are. Uh, where are you? I know where I am. Uh, you might not even be able to shoot something other than a 22. I don't know. Uh, so it enables you to be a cowboy, to play cowboy just like me with a 22. Because this thing is, this is a genuine article. It's a Colt clone, operates just like a Colt. And it feels like one, maybe a little heavier because, you know, it's a 22. And do I need to explain why this firearm in the same barrel length as that one might be a little heavier? Think about it now. Come on, my relatives up there in Kentucky, why would this be a little heavier? Yeah, you got it. I heard somebody. It's got a smaller hole in the barrel and in the cylinder. Even though there's a lot of holes in the cylinder, there are smaller holes. So it's going to be a little bit heavier. Uh... And let's see, they retail for about, I think the MSRP is around 560 bucks. You know, they don't give them away, of course. And uh, they come, I think, just in this finish, this particular firearm. You know, the color case hardened in blue in the grips. Uh, but they come in different barrel lengths. They also do come in a six shot, though, I think. So that's kind of up to you. Some people have an aversion to, to a, a single action that holds more, or even a revolver even a revolver, even a double action revolver like a Smith & Wesson or a Taurus or Ruger that holds more than six. Uh, you know, some real traditionalists just think they ought to be a six shooter and not seven or nine and 12. Yeah, so I understand that. I'm, I'm kind of funny about some of that stuff myself, as you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm a little quirky. There's some guns I like, some guns I don't like as much. And, uh, but anyway, Pretty neat, let me load it. You know what I'll do, just to demonstrate, I know what I'm doing. We're on a range, I will load 12. I think people <laughs> for about 10 years here, a few, have given me a hard time about loading five rounds in my Colts. You're on a range, Hickok, what's wrong with you? And so, yeah, you could go to the range if you're gonna just load it and fire. It's not exactly a, a tragedy if you fill up the cylinder. You see where the barrel's pointed into the hillside over there. Okay. And when I cock the hammer, now it's live. It's not going to be down on an empty chamber. So I do need to go ahead and shoot the thing. And let's shoot that pot hanging there. Yeah. And there's another, well, I shot him. Let's shoot that stop sign right in the middle. Okay. That's about as middle as you can get. So that tells me the sights are on. So when I miss, I really don't have a legitimate excuse. All right, I know, I hear y'all. You haven't tried the gong yet. Let's try the gong. Well, I gotta do it with one hand, don't I? Like a real cowboy. Okay. If I could stand the recoil. Might have gone low. Or it might have gone high. Or it might have gone left. Let's bring it up a little bit. 
Huh. Well, I'm going to bring it up a little more. There we go. Okay, so it was it was hitting low, I guess. Try another one. It may be empty. I'll hold up on near the top of it. I think I heard that one hit. Okay. Let's try the cowboy again here. I think I'm empty. No, I'm not. Wow. What am I saying? I better be counting my rounds. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good shooter. It really is. It's uh, you got to know where to hold, especially when you're shooting 22 rim fire and you're getting distance because it it does drop pretty quickly. But uh, and we're shooting a mixer now. Those are CCI mostly mixed in there. And here's some uh, Federal Premium uh, Small Game. Let's try some Small Game. We'll load up one more time here. I don't want to keep you guys too late. Uh, it's cool. You know, it loads and unloads just like a uh, just like the big boy gun. And so, uh, you folks that are fans of single actions, uh, this, this might be an option for you. That's, that's why I wanted to get it. I, I think this would appeal to some people. You know, single, you know it's going to appeal to me because it's a single action. Uh oh, hollow points. These might be too dangerous to shoot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the three again just to show you. In case you buy one of these, you will know the method. Load three, skip one and fill her up be eight more and it is kind of a plinking gun you might stick in a holster and if you've got a place where you can walk around and shoot and uh, that is a very very uh, wonderful thing to have i never take that for granted being able to just walk around and shoot carefully on some land all right now this is going to come down on an empty chamber see okay there's also little indentions. I don't know if you noticed in the chamber there. Maybe I'll show you when I empty it. Uh, that's supposed to make it less harmful to dry fire this particular firearm. I'll show you that. Now, I still wouldn't want to do it much. All right. Oh, there's a pot hiding behind the... There, right there. Yeah. I always feel weird shooting these with two hands. But, yeah, a lot of people do that. Uh, and it's probably the way you'd want to do it. Uh, you want to practice before you... Let's, I'm going to try for that stop sign. Try to put one on top of that hit that's already there. Okay. Okay. Hey, I said on top of it. I did, didn't I? Above it. <laughs> of course, I meant right on it. Okay. You need to hold down a little bit. There we go. That one's kind of on it. Uh, who else? Want? Oh, the other cowboy always gets neglected. Yeah, let's try the red plate. Of course, I had a little trouble on the gong. I'll hold on top of it, see what happens. That was a bad shot. I don't know. I don't know where it's going. I'm going to try the gong again. I'm holding on top of it. Oh, you know what? This ammo might be hotter. I didn't think about that. Because it's small game and it's hollow point. I don't know. But it shoots right on. Uh, and if I mess with it a while, I'd know exactly where to hold on the gong and all that. Because here close at these targets, uh, boy, if it's left or right, or even much higher low it's uh it's me definitely so nifty little gun but, uh it's great being able to just find something like this and and uh send an email you know to buds and uh you know have the thing shipped so we can show you so we obviously appreciate that uh, it's great to be able to have the privilege of doing it we appreciate the nra and everything they do so hope you'll join if you're not a member and I guess I've shot it enough probably what do you think uh, so pretty cool I'm not gonna muck it up with shooting you know the the 45 or anything uh, kind of muddy the water uh, I, you know I'm a fan of big bore stuff like that but uh, this this little thing has its place and it seems to be well made and uh, you know the cattleman has pretty good reputation you got 18 model 1873 that was a big year we have a video called 1873 
and for good reason. It was a very big year in terms of firearms innovation and cartridges and, and all of that. So, oh, one thing I meant to show you, you almost let me forget. The safety is don't shoot at anything you don't want to destroy. Well, that's one of the safeties. The safety on the, the mechanical safety on it is kind of, kind of weird in a way. You, you know, the base pin is right there. It goes through the cylinder and the back of it's back there. So what you do is, if you want, now let's see, I'll half cock it to make sure I can do it. You push the base pin in a little further like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and cock it all the way. And you see it protrudes back there a little bit. And you can see how that would prevent the hammer from falling far enough, see, to fire. You see the gap there. So the firing pin will not contact the round as long as it's right there. Okay, so there's an extra notch on that base pin up there. And it's a little weird, that's not historical, that's not the way any of the old Colts were, of course, but it is a, a common practice with some of these guns to just make the safety like that. If you put it right in that notch, then it's positioned correctly and lets the hammer fall all the way. So, yes, the, you know, if you wanted to use that for what I would rather leave a round or a chamber empty myself, okay? So, so much for that, and that's that's fairly common on the on the Uberti Cattleman uh, revolvers. My other one is like that. So I will uh, let you guys go back to your uh, endeavors, whatever those might have been. I will stick this back in my holster. It's empty, so I better not get in any gunfights in the streets of Tombstone with an empty firearm. Uh, it's great because it fits all, of course, standard holsters like this. Uh, the old El Paso rig that I dearly love. It's been fun bringing this to you, and uh, yeah, if it's something you're interested in, uh, it probably should be something you would investigate. I don't know who else makes one in a 12-shot variety. Uh, if anybody besides you, Bertie, does that in a single action, uh, you might look around. It could be that uh, Ruger. I don't think Ruger does, but they might. You know, because this is just the one I'm aware of. So I thought you might find it interesting. So anyway, don't try to create one yourself by drilling holes or more holes in your revolver. Just buy one already made. Life is good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that because I know I sure did. While well, I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonora Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.